shake your head, sir. This is the best news you can hear. Sir, don't go anywhere. This is the best news you can hear. Because you see, just like the memorial you're at, you're at the Lincoln Memorial who set slaves free. I can tell you in John 8, chapter 8, verse 34, Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, everyone who commits sin is a slave to sin. So every one of you here today within my voice is either a slave to sin or you're a slave to Christ. That's what you're saying. A slave to sin or a slave to Christ. And friends, it is our hope that you would hear this good news message and that you would hear that you can know everlasting peace, everlasting joy, everlasting hope, everlasting life in the only name by which you may be saved, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. So we're here with this good news message, and this is not the Jesus of the, the Mormon faith who will teach you he's the spirit brother of Lucifer. It is not the Jesus of the Jehovah Witness and Watchtower Society that teaches you that he is Michael the Archangel, or even the Jesus of the health, wealth, and prosperity that tells you you can have your best life now. But this is the Alpha, the Omega, the, 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 the one that came as the spotless, sinless Lamb of God, and who will return as the Lion of the tribe of Judah to judge the living and the dead. This is the Jesus, this is God who every single one of us, Hebrews 9.27 says, everyone will die and everyone will stand and judge us. appointed a man to die once, then comes judgment, sir. Do you know that? Do you know that you'll stand before God? And are you ready to stand before God, sir? Are you ready to stand before God? Friends, there's a way you can know you have eternal life. It's a good news message. It's a message that you can know. This, this Jesus, think about it, you're at the Lincoln Memorial right now. You are here where slaves were set free, and in a temporal sense they were set free. But in a spiritual sense, regarding your eternity, none of you are free. You're either a slave to sin or you're a slave to Christ. And it's only through the power of Jesus Christ and the cross on Calvary that you can have freedom from that sin. That you can have freedom because you see, friends, everyone out here thinks they're a good person. Everyone out here is going their own way, doing their own thing, and they're like, you know what? I got this. I know. I, I know what I'm doing. It's okay, preacher man. I don't. I don't need your Jesus stuff. Listen, friends. You need Jesus. You need Christ. You need eternal life. Because you see, friends, you consider yourself a good person. My question is, by what standard are you a good person? By what standard do you evaluate yourself? to be well. By what standard do you evaluate yourself to be good? Is it your own standard? Is it how many Twitter followers you have? How many Facebook friends you have? What is your standard for good? Because every single person out here on this plaza, everybody, black, white, yellow, green, red, all of us, have one thing in common, and that is we are all going to die. Again, Hebrews 9.27 says it's appointed to man to die once, and then comes the judgment. And so friends, when you face that judgment, there is only one way you're going to be able to stand before God Almighty, the Creator of the heaven and the earth, the one to before every tongue will confess and every knee, every knee will bow, that He is Lord, you will stand before Him, and there's only one way you can stand there and not be crushed into oblivion, and that is by the righteousness of one who came before us, Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. You see, friends, when you're a slave to sin, you're a slave to sin, sin has you where it wants you. It's got these spiritual blinders on because you're walking through like everything is fine. But what you don't understand in an eternal sense is every single one of us, Romans says, Romans 3.23, that all of sin, all fall short of the glory of God, including, including myself and my friends here. But friends, it also says, none is good, no, not one. So the, the, the question, the predicament is, and this is the greatest question you'll ever have to answer. And friends, if you can answer this question, if you can answer this question and answer it correctly, It'll be your key to eternal life. It is the question that has spawned every religion that's ever been on this planet. It's the question that has driven man, man crazy and driven man to come up with idols and false things. It is this question. The question is this. How can God be God and man be anything but damned? That's the ultimate question. How can man work his way back to God? That's how every religion gets started. Every religion. And friends, you'll find there are only two. Do you know that? How, you know there's only two religions in this world? Did you know that, friends? There's the religion of human accomplishment, of human achievement, and then there's the religion of divine accomplishment. And friends, here's the difference. Christianity is the only religion, the only religion, 
where God makes a way to come back down to us, to make a way for us to come back into communion with Him. Only Christianity, every other false religion out there, whether it be Islam and the false prophet Muhammad, or whether it be the, the Mormons and their false teachings from Joseph Smith, or, or the false teachings from the Watchtower Society. Don't worry your eyes, friends. This is the best message you can hear. Do you know Christ? Do you know Christ, sir? Do you know, why not, sir? Do you care about your eternity? It doesn't matter what you believe. What matters is what's true, sir. No, I won't, sir. That doesn't matter what you believe. You see there? There we go. Somebody who is suppressing the truth because he loves his sin nature. He wants to answer to nobody but himself. And friends, it doesn't matter whether you agree with it. It doesn't matter whether you like it. It doesn't matter whether you believe it. What matters is what is true. And what is true is what I just told you, that there are only two religions on this, on this planet. There's the religion of human achievement, and there's the religion of divine accomplishment. And for its Christianity, Jesus Christ says in one verse, in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. He says, and listen, listen friends, no one, no one comes to the Father but through me. With that one verse in the Bible, Jesus Christ eliminated every other works righteousness system that is out there of every other religion. Eliminated. It's gone. Friends, it's been made simple. We serve, we, we are created by a God of communication. He's given us 66 books so that you may know him. You don't need some, some pope or some priest in a little secret vault at the Vatican to tell you what the Bible says. We're given the Bible so we can know. Listen, we're not here to condemn anybody. John, in John chapter 3, it says, if you don't have a saving relationship with Jesus Christ, the Bible says you're condemned already. Friends, we're here with, 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 with the life, with, with the everlasting life, the message that you can know that your sin debt can be paid for. Because you see, friends, every one of you, you can shake your head and wag the tongue and say you're happy and you don't believe, but every single one of you were created in the image of God. Did you know that, man? Everyone. And you know what that means. You're created in the image of God. Every single one of us. Being created in the image of God, that is a moral statement. Did you know that, young lady? You're created in the image of God? You were. You have a conscience. Did you know that? Right? Where does that conscience come from? It comes from God. That conscience comes from God. Your dad has a conscience, too. That comes from God. You, too, bro. So we have a conscience. We have a conscience that comes from God. That's what sin is, friends. Sin is anything that's against the character of God. You know it's wrong to steal, don't you? You know it's wrong to steal, right? Why is it wrong to steal? Because God's not a thief. You know why it's wrong to lie? Because God's not a liar. You know why it's wrong to lie? God's not a blasphemer. Sin is anything against the character of God. And every one of us are made in God's image. From, that's a moral statement. And so when you sin, when you choose to say, no, I don't need you, God, I don't need you, Jesus, I just need myself and my own rules, and you refuse to bow a knee to the King of kings and Lord of lords, friend, it's going to be a very bad eternity for you. And let me tell you, eternity is a long time to be wrong. I can't stand being wrong for five minutes with my wife. I couldn't imagine being wrong with the creator of the universe for eternity. So God has given us his law. Now, yes, we are under grace, friends, but we can't let the law loose. We have to understand the law because Paul says that the law is the schoolmaster that leads to Christ. I tell my, I tell my son that over the door, you know what it says over the door of heaven, sir? It says perfect people only. Does anybody qualify for that? I know I don't. So how do you do it? How do you get through that door when it says perfect people only? You, you can either go by yourself, which you can't, because James says if you've broken one law, you've broken them all. Or you can go based on the merit and the righteousness and the works of somebody who went before you, Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ, listen, alone. And Friends, all roads don't lead the road. Do you know Christ, sir? Why would you mock? Why would you mock someone that gives you eternal life, sir, that offers that to you? A free gift. And a scoffer and a mocker like that, friends, will hear the most tragic words when he stands before God. He'll say, depart from me, I never knew you, you worker of lawlessness. As all creation cheers as he's tossed into hell because he has refused. When God has, God has given every one of you right now, if you have breath in your lungs, you have the opportunity to receive Christ. I can do it. Sir, why don't you know Christ, sir? Why, why would you turn such a free gift of salvation away, sir? Karma will get you, my friend. <laughs> it could if it was real, friend, but there's no such thing as karma. There's no such thing as karma. So where do you find truth, sir? Where do you find truth? Where do you find truth, sir? Sir, where do you find truth? 
Where do you find truth, sir? You're making a lot of truth claims, but you can't tell me 